What have I just watched? That was such an infuriating performance from Tottenham. I just, I just can't get my head around what I've just seen. It's absolutely mind blowing. And considering in the last two trips up to St James's Park, we've lost four nil and six one, absolute tonkings. Especially the first one, which was I think we were five nil down in twenty or so minutes. This one is more painful. This one is more frustrating because we were in that game. We were dominating that game, but we've been sucker punched from poor defensive displays and some individual performances that need questioning. It's just not good enough. It's really not good enough at this level. Some of the just craziness I've seen on that pitch, obviously full-time at St. James's Park, Newcastle 2, Tottenham one and just looking at the stats first of all nine shots for Newcastle three on target let me just refresh that just to double check that that is spot on because it, 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 I just can't get my head around it yeah so nine shots three on target 34 percent possession 253 passes uh to you know as, as the main stats from the top and then for Spurs 20 shots six on target 66 percent possession 491 passes. It's just absolutely mind mind blowing what has just happened. It's just it, it, it's Leicester all over again. It's not taking your chances in a key period of the game where you're creating so much. You know, don't get me wrong. Some amazing great saves from Nick Pope, but when push comes to shove, you've just got to be so. You know, you've got to be potent in those areas. And, you know, the fact that Pedro Poro had the most shots for us in that game sort of sums it up that the attacking line just isn't linking up. There's a massive problem with... Let's just put it this way. As you all know, I love Ange Postacoglu. I think he's a great coach. I want him to be our manager long term. Obviously, there's there's things in this game which he didn't do well and the high line against Newcastle was a bit worrying and that's where the goal has come from that won the game. But... If you are going to play this type of football, we need to put away those chances and beat them. You know, when we go one all, two, three, four, you know, like what we did against Everton, and Everton were obviously a poor side. And it's just, it's just absolutely, I, you know, you could tell this is raw, this is straight after the game. I'm absolutely lost for words about how that game is, how we've lost that game. Because Newcastle, Absolutely horrific and lucky to get a point against Bournemouth last week. Bournemouth really were unlucky. And then you look at that and you think, what the hell has gone on? How how has that happened? But I guess before I go any further, if you are new around here and this is your first time on the Sunny Talk Spurs channel, why don't you leave a like? Let me know in the comments what what have you made of that? Like make make sense of it. It's absolutely mind-boggling. As I say, leave a like. Subscribe to Sunny Talk Spurs. Hit the notification bell so you're alerted when videos like this drop into your box. And also you can become a member. Link in the description down below. Weekly podcasts on the channel. But yeah, as I say, I mean, the game didn't start, you know, we didn't start as our usual dynamic self. Um, you know, early doors, it was a bit backwards and forwards. They had a few good chances, uh, you know. But again, the first goal comes from absolutely... Some pure laziness from our team. You know, Romero, I'll be honest, I've praised Romero in recent weeks and months. Very poor today. Out of position, running around, headless chicken, and the goal sort of comes because he's not back. You know, leaves, you know, amount of times that Dragerson and Romero have had to do last-ditch tackles in this game is mind-boggling. Obviously, massive loss have not having um, Mickey van der Ven in the team, you know, because he'd be able to, you know, drive back and pick up these balls. So hopefully his injury is not too bad. And I also think Dominic Solanke is a big miss. The amount of crosses going into the area that he's not on the end of, very, very worrying. Very worrying that, you know, we need a player like that to sort of, you know, pop the ball edge of the area. He turns, faces, you know, a couple of pop shots and stuff like that. But against teams like Newcastle who play this low block and counter, we just can't seem to break them down, which is the most infuriating part about it. And then, you know, we come out at, in the second half looking a bit more sprightly and we just we just have so many chances. Madison, you know, Pe Pedro Porro to start hits the crossbar before we equalise. Uh, James Madison hits the, you know, you know, pop shots and Nick Pope just, you know, makes a 
amazing save. But obviously, that was after the goal. And the goal, it's very lucky on our part, sort of Nick Pope saves the initial shot. Brennan Johnson sort of puts it back into the mixer. Pope puts a hand out and Dan Byrne kicks it. And I thought we deserved it. You know, we're in the ascendancy. And then after that, we look like we should have gone a couple ahead. But again, high line gets caught out. Um, and, you know, Jacob Murphy, who came on, looked absolutely woeful. Breaks through, really good ball. I'm not sure which midfielder plays it through. But Isaac, who has done nothing in the game, puts it away, you know, sort of like one of those FIFA goals, sweaty goal across the area. And, you know, this Newcastle team have been together for a while now, but they know how to grind out these results. They know, you know, their strengths, you know, Bruno and uh, Joe Linton, who got man of the match, really tough in midfield. I just think on midfield, it's still getting really, like, it started off, obviously, with Saar, picked up a yellow card, and Basuma and Madison, and I just think all three of them were poor. And when they're all poor, the defence suffers, and the team just, the front line. I thought Wilson Odebear was probably one of the best players today. Brendan Johnson came on and looked good as well. Sun struggled so badly in this game. I don't know what was the matter with him. He just wasn't getting his feet right. Same with Dan Kulisevsky. Some of the decision-making, that's what it comes down to. And this is like where the title sort of comes from. The problem we have is we, if we are going to play this brand of football, which I love, we've got to take our chances. We've got to be less wasteful. And hopefully that's Dominic Solanke is the answer to that question. Because at the moment, like Sun, I just don't know if he's working well on the left without Solanke. Madison doesn't work well without Solanke. There's a lot of pressure on Solanke. This is what worries me a lot. If he doesn't actually come into the team and score goals and be that focal point that we need, that's where we're going to suffer in games. But yeah, just frustrating. And just, we, we, we played well. As I say, the last two results where we absolutely, you'd rather get tanks than, you know, have all those chances and you leave St. James's with a 2-1 loss. The fans must be absolutely gutted. And the thing is, this result, I mean, it, you know, it, it will fuel the, fuel the whole agenda that, you know, are we being found out? Is, is Ange the right man for the job? I mean, I, I don't really, dis I disagree with all of that completely. Um, it just seems that, you know, right before an international break, we could do without that. And then we've got Arsenal in the North London derby. Obviously, they've not got Declan Rice, which is a massive plus. But yeah, just really, really, you just need to, you know what it is? It's it's the fact that you look at all three games that we've had so far this season. You have Leicester, where we've dominated them in the first half, should have beat them, one all draw. Everton, a 4 0 win where I thought we played well, but some people don't didn't think it was convincing. And it is Everton. We saw them yesterday, obviously, uh, against Bournemouth, absolutely go, you know, 2 0 up in the 87th minute and lose 3 2. They're very, very poor. And then this Newcastle side, who have been poor as well. I know it's away from home, but, you know, again, you know, it's all well and good having possession, having all these chances. We've got to be clinical. And I know Ange Postacoglu will be as, no as annoyed as the Spurs fans and agree with everything I'm probably saying here on this video. But just need that clinical edge. I, I don't understand why Odebear came off. I know he's raw and he missed a couple of chances, but he's more direct than Werner. And Werner came on and looked absolutely pants. Um, we've got a long, hard season, Europa League football. So, yeah, these, these, um, these players really need to pull their finger out and... You know, we were clinical last week. You know, Sun scored two. Romero scored one as well. Uh, and I just think there's just moments where we've just got to be, you know, more clever with our decision making. You know, there's crosses. Some of the crosses that are going in and no one's on the end of them. And it, I mean, it probably the answer to that question again, Dominic Salanki should be on the end of them. But just so, uh, it's just frustrating, isn't it? Uh, just really, really annoying that you leave St. James's after all what's happened over the recent years. We played so well. It's just a dagger, isn't it? It's just a dagger to the heart of, you know, you look forward to watching Spurs every week and then that performance comes out and you just leave thinking like, what could have done? And that's what you learn from it. But yeah, as I said, uh, halfway through the video, I believe, let me know your thoughts on it. What have you made of it? 
Uh, what, like that performance? Do you think the performance was good, but the result just didn't follow up with it? What do you think are the biggest issues for Spurs? Um, is the high line an issue? Does that need to be resolved? Was it just because Dragerson's not used to it and Mickey van der Ven was heavily missed? What do you make if Dominic Solanke was in the game? All these key questions. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you have enjoyed it, leave a like. Subscribe to Sunny Talk Spurs, hit the notification bell, and also become a member. Link in the description down below. Weekly exclusive podcast for a very small fee, but I appreciate it because I want to give you guys, you know, nearly daily content on this channel. Um, and I'm loving it to bits. Although I'm not loving it when we lose. So, yeah, uh, should be a lot of good videos coming out during international break. So, good time to subscribe. But until next time, I'll see you guys pretty soon. Ciao.